For setup three, we're going to go ahead and machine out a majority of the material that, that was left over from setup one. Now, if you remember right, we had like a little triangle slice that ended up here when we did the original machining of this fillet on the angle. So what we're going to do is we're just going to do a tool path to go ahead and change this out, and that'll be our third setup. Now, if you remember right, we still have this material on the outside too. So as we look at it from a clamping standpoint, we actually have material coming all the way to the side here. Our last op will be to machine everything off for these tabs. You'll also notice that partway through this we made a revision change. We decided to keep the whole fastener size the same between here and here so that way we're using the same hardware over and over. So by making this a 406 hole for a 3 8 bolt we actually removed the fillet in this corner um, mainly for consistency in hardware as we mount the slave cylinder as well as mount to the firewall. So for this example, we've created a configuration for our third setup. We've dropped in our part with the changes. We're still using the same Kurt Vice. When I go over to Solder's Cam, I've created a new configuration for setup three. I have jumped ahead and added the part, added the stock, and set up the coordinate system just like we did in the previous versions. So from here, we're going to create a mill part setup. So let's click the top face. We have our arrow going the right way. We're just going to do a, we'll just do a pocket for this. So we'll go ahead and use our sketch that's there. Our end condition on this will be to the bottom of the material we have. And for this, we're just going to do a rough with an offset of zero. We actually, let's do a rough finish. That way we have a finish pass to come around and if there's any flex. Now, one thing to note is I did do an up to face, but I'm going to change my mind here. Uh, there are going to be times where, like, if I machine this all the way through the bottom, then the, the part's going to come loose in the vise because it's actually going to flex a little bit. So there may be times where, instead of going two and a half, I want to go and stay 50 thousandths from the bottom of the part. So I'll have a 50 thousandths piece of material I can cut out later and blend in, and that gives me some rigidity across the bottom of the part. So we'll just keep that a little bit shallow. We'll go ahead and we'll generate the operation plan. We'll use our 3 8 again, generate toolpath. We now have a toolpath to go ahead and finish that. For this example here, we'll go ahead and make a change. We'll do tool. We'll rough this out with volume mill. We'll leave 10 thousandths. First cuts 50. That should be okay. We'll do user defined. Let it calculate the tool paths. You see I'm spiraling in, so I'll change that quick again. Uh, I'll go to a ramp, that way we main, maintain consistency with what we had before. And then we'll do our slot feed rate a little bit slower. Let it update. We'll change this profile here for our feeds and speeds. And we'll just do a quick simulation. Actually, I need to edit the definition here. I'll make sure that I have my work offset set. Simulator toolpath. Just run turbo so we can see where it ends up. Everything looks good and that covers it for setup three.